Hey guys, what's up? Welcome back, and um, thanks for watching this video. And I'm actually going to do a first uh, answer to a question that I received, uh, a guy by the name of uh, Fabim, if I'm saying that right, and uh, last name uh, starts with an M. So Fabim M, and he asks, um, he's like, I, I really enjoy your videos, and I just started learning programming, and then you talked about Python, and I chose PHP for a web developer. Do you think I should stick with PHP or change over to Python? And then he mentions that he is more comfortable currently with PHP. So um, one of the things that, that I would number one look at uh, is as far as where is the technology headed into the future. Now PHP, um, the first thing I would caution is that it, for the last few years it seems to be losing market share year after year. Um, and it's giving that up to uh, Python and and Ruby uh, for the most part when it comes to the web domain. So. Another thing, uh, you know, in that regard, is that PHP is a primarily web-based language. So it's a language that was invented for the web, and that's really the only place you're going to see it get used is for web. And when you compare something like that to Python, Python is in robotics, it's in uh, education, it's in uh, GUI app development. So actual software applications, um, some of them are written in Python. It's a, a lot of scripting is done for it. So uh, a lot of um, you know file scripts you know to clean up certain directories and things like that you'll see a lot of, of Python there where you wouldn't really see PHP so definitely when it comes to having multiple domains there's not even a question about whether or not Python and or PHP Python is clearly uh, the better option now I'm gonna borrow from this uh, website here the CACM.ACM.org uh, they posted last year an article that shows that uh, Python is now the most taught introdu introductory language and 39 of the top uh, computer science departments so um, these aren't just small schools they are actually some of the largest and some of the most uh, distinguished IT schools in the United States um, and I believe actually the world I'm not sure you'd have to go to this article here um, to get more information to read through this I actually didn't read it through all of it uh, but I do know you know just to touch on the highlight is that Python's now it overtook Java in 2014 as the most taught introductory language. So PHP isn't going to show up anywhere on this list. So unfortunately, Python also has PHP beat in that regard. And the article also goes on to mention some of that school. So I'll go ahead and uh, just mention like Carnegie Mellon, Milligan, or some sorry, Carnegie Mellon. MIT, Stanford, Berkeley, a lot of these major universities. So it's not even just top universities. There's some Ivy League schools in there as well. Now you mentioned that you're more comfortable with PHP already than Python. So that should also be considered. Now a lot of people, they, lo they love to bash PHP. They say it's the worst language of all time and uh, that it will teach you horrible habits and things like that. And some of that may be true, but um, just want to touch on a key point here that there are some major uh, websites out there that are currently running a PHP stack. So I'll go ahead and just give a shout out to PHP as far as the top three um, that come to mind for me. Uh, number one is Wikipedia. It's a top 10 website in the world, so that's using PHP. Now, this isn't the most, uh, this isn't the prettiest site in the world. It doesn't do much. There's not much functionality there. It's it's an open source uh, encyclopedia. So uh, the the amount of sophistication is, I guess, not that impressive. But the fact that it's so widely used and that it is a top 10 website in the world it, and running a PHP stack is is pretty good. Uh, second in line, you have Flickr.com. Uh, so Flickr is um, used to be the number one photo sharing website. It's owned by Yahoo, and uh, currently still is pretty big and popular. Uh, unfortunately, Yahoo is struggling with uh, profitability, and they have been for several years. So we don't know what's going to end up happening to Flickr in the future. But for right now, it's still a pretty established brand, and as of last year, it's still running on a PHP stack. And then finally, the largest one is going to be Facebook.com. So everybody knows Facebook.com. Uh, they've never moved away from PHP, so they're still using PHP and they're using MySQL. And um, although they now use other languages like C++ and they even make use of Python and uh, Erlang and a couple of other ones, but um, they still do have a uh, PHP-based stack. So something Zuckerberg did while he was at Harvard, and you know, obviously it worked out pretty well for him. 
Now, when I mentioned um, when you want to look at what kind of languages are going to be there for you in the future, I really feel like uh, PHP's time and sun has already has already taken place. So I, I really feel like we're going to see PHP sunsetting over the next decade or so. Um, but you're still going to see it around for quite some time, and there's always going to be a demand for PHP, probably within your lifetime, I would imagine, uh, as a software developer. But that being said, um, there is still quite a bit of demand, like I said, and if we look at something like GitHub, which is the largest open source, uh, or not open source, but largest online code repository for open source projects, that gives you a real good gauge of what languages are hip and which ones are cool, um, because ultimately uh, wherever you know the hip and trendy projects are and languages are you're gonna have a lot of uh, a lot of projects based around that so github gives you a good idea on what what's going strong and when we look at github you can actually see um, that PHP is is ranked ahead of Python as the most uh, widely used language on their stack so um, a lot of PHP projects they actually have uh, out or outpaced actually they're kind of flatline but um, they are ahead of Python in, in that regard. So uh, PHP has more open source projects on GitHub than Python at the moment. One of the criticisms of PHP is that it's a very ugly language to look at, and I actually happen to agree with that. I try not to bust on people's languages and give them a hard time about it, but when I look at PHP code, I don't, I don't like it. It's, um, it looks like, it almost looks like Perl. Um, it, it tries to. It got, it got a lot of influence from Perl, so there's a reason for that. Like I hate having to use symbols to declare uh, arrays and scalar variables and whatever they want to call them. But uh, it just looks terrible having to use dollar signs and and pound signs and stuff like that. I've always hated that about Perl. So here's an example from PHP's site, and this isn't even as bad as what you can see, but when you start getting hundreds of lines and you have this garbage all scattered throughout your HTML file, I mean, this is just, it, this is not even that bad, but it looks terrible. So if I like looked at a file possibly, and you, you just get a lot of this kind of stuff here, which is, um, like I said, this is actually the same thing I just showed you, but it's just not the prettiest language in the world. So when you start getting hundreds or thousands of lines of code scattered throughout the pages, it gets a little bit difficult to look at. And on the contrary, if I were going to look at something in Python, I could actually say with open and then give a path to the file as f for, for line and f. And that, what that's going to do, it's going to read through the file line by line. And you can see Python has uh, indentation. In fact, it uh, you can see it in PHP as well, but it's optional in PHP. Python actually requires that you indent your code. So if you're just getting started coding, uh, Python's a good language just because it forces you to do that. So it actually forces you to learn good proper coding standards to make it much easier for you and other people that might come along later on and read your code. So Python being the most taught introductory language, uh, uh, part of that is because it does teach you these um, these coding standards that you can't ignore in Python, but you can ignore them in PHP and many other languages. Now, the biggest criticism of PHP in the modern day world now is that it's not object oriented at all. Um, so strictly speaking, um, it's kind of a procedural programming language with some sort of uh, like object oriented type uh, constructs, which are not object oriented at all when you compare them over to something like C Sharp or Java. And if you ever wanted to get into enterprise development in the corporate world, you're going to be dealing with a lot of C Sharp and Java. And, uh, and those are entirely object-oriented languages. So the actual transition from PHP over to C Sharp is going to be huge. And um, the same thing can somewhat be said of Python as well. Python um, is not an entirely object-oriented language, but it, it can be completely object-oriented. Um, but the transition is not going to be as bad trying to move over from Python over to C Sharp or Java, but it will still be somewhat of a headache because there's a lot of differences between the two, especially if you're, if you're just getting started. And when I say Python not being object-oriented, um, it's not entirely object-oriented where you do have the option of actually writing your code in an object-oriented way, um, or you can use it as a um, you know, procedural-based programming language. Now, Python um, is not an entirely web-based language, like I mentioned before, but I would be remiss if I didn't mention some of the top sites that are now running on a Python stack. And um, usually this is done through a web framework, which PHP has many frameworks as well, but uh, when it comes to the Django web framework, it is a top-of-the-line framework. Instagram.com is written on top of it. 
Uh, Reddit.com actually uses Python, but it, I believe it uses the Pylons web framework. And then you have uh, Pinterest.com, which is also on Django, and that's also a top uh, top tier website. So there's plenty more. There's actually probably more examples I could come up with with uh, you know some of the largest websites in the world using a Python stack um, compared to a, a PHP stack. But uh, overall, there are way more PHP websites out there from mom and pop shops uh, on down um, that are using PHP over Python. So I'm not sure if that is something that you would consider being a good factor or not. Just because something has more websites as opposed to larger ones, I'm not sure uh, you know, how you value that, but that's something to keep in mind. So really, um, th that's about where I'm going to wrap up this video. My advice would be to not use PHP, to probably try to go in a different direction. Um, if you do go the PHP direction, you might end up you know, finding yourself having to build like WordPress plugins and stuff like that, and you're going to be doing a lot of freelance jobs. and. Um, you're going to see demand continue to dwindle for PHP programmers as we move into the future. Um, Python is going to get you a little bit more, um, you know, more up to date on an object oriented type language. If you wanted to go completely enterprise development, I would probably say C Sharp or Java would be a good thing to jump into even now. Um, but I don't really think that there's too many people out there that would debate whether or not. PHP is better than Python. I think a lot of people would probably give a nod over to Python, um, but you know, to each their own. And I, I, I'm not going to be the first one, or I'm not going to be one to to say that PHP is a terrible language. There's going to be a lot of people that that will say that. Um, so I'll leave that up to them. I mean, I've done a little bit of PHP programming. I can't say that I hated it, um, but it, it definitely isn't for me. And I, I, using both PHP and Python, I would give Python the nod for sure. Uh, but thanks for asking the question, and thanks for anybody who watched this video. Please subscribe. Uh, please vote up if you would. I appreciate it, and have a good night. Bye.